I want to give everyone here a warm welcome into the presence of God and into today's word, especially those of you who are new here and you have just come across this ministry. I encourage you to stick around and continue to press in deep to the things of God. Even long after you have clicked off of this message and you're just into your own private time with the Lord, I encourage you to seek out the things of God. Seek out God's promises. Seek out what his word says about you, who he says you are, what he says you could have. Very important, but I'm glad that you are here. It brings me so much joy to come share the word of the Lord with you. And here's the thing. I'm going to be sharing something very, as it always is, on time and in season for you right now. I don't believe that you're listening to this by accident. I can say that by the Spirit of God, that He ordered your steps here. And because of that, there is something very specific and detailed that He wants to share with you today, that you will walk away knowing this is exactly where God has me in life and at this time and this season. This is exactly what God wants me to do. This is what he's revealing to me that I need to do next. And you'll have peace. You'll have peace. You will be encouraged and quickened within your spirit. And that's just what revelation does, right? That's just what the spirit of God does when he comes into the, our mix. When he comes into the atmosphere, he reveals things to us that we didn't know before. And through that, we are increased in our faith. Through that, we're able to endure when we weren't able to endure before. Through that, we're able to stand when we weren't able to stand before. That is what happens when you when you feed your spirit man. So I want to say a prayer, as I always do. I don't ever want to get into the word of the Lord without opening it up in prayer. And then I'll get into the, the word for the, the word of the Lord today. Um, I thank you, Lord for sending your children to this message. I thank you, God, that you always come before us with an on-time, in-season message. And it's only a matter of time before your word, after your word is released, before we see it be made manifest in our life. Only a matter of time. We take hold of all of your promises now in the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. We take hold of everything that your word says that we could have. We take hold of our identity and you, God, And through that, we will see the goodness of God. We know and have faith that your word will never return back to you void. And so we stand on it (coughs) in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you have ordered their steps for every single person who's here under the sound of my voice. I know they're not here by accident. And because of that, you have something very specific you want to share with them. So I lower myself today, God. We all do. We bow low before you today, Lord, and humility. And, and, and humility, God, because we know we know nothing apart from you. There is no truth that is the absolute truth outside of your word. So we look to you. We look to your word, God. And we ask that you open up the scriptures to us today. Pour out fresh anointing on us today, Lord. Pour out fresh anointing on all who is listening right now in the name of Jesus. Pour out your spirit, God. Let the fire of God burn up anything that is not of you. Root up things, Lord, that has taken root within their lives and thought it was there to stay, but the devil is a liar. You have come, Lord, so that we may have life and have it more abundantly, and the sun sets free is free indeed. Let there be freedom as a result of the message that is ministered today. Let there be things that were bound be loosed in the name of Jesus as a result of this message today. Let resources come forth as their faith increases and they know what they can have. Let opportunities present themselves, God, as they know that you are a God who leads them into all truth. And not only that, you are a lamp into their feet. And so as we are in alignment with you, as we're making ourselves right with you, God, it's only a matter of time before all the things that you said are meant for us in this time and this life begins to show up in our life. So I thank you, Lord, as opportunities begin to present themselves, as doors begin to open because you hold the key. You are the one who says doors can open and they will once the word is spoken. You are the one who says doors shall close and they will never open again because the word was spoken. I thank you, God. I thank you for the power of the living God. 
and replacing that same power, God, within us. Let it no longer lay dormant, but activate it within them today. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm glad that you're here. I really am. I really am. You know, we're going to be talking about your sign to keep going. And the reason we're going to be talking about this is because you know, there, the Lord will show you things. He will show us many things that are meant for us. And it won't, it'll never be the full picture. It will never be the full picture. I'm going to prove that to you within the word of God. But I do want to just put that out there for those of you who are on the fence about some things that the Lord has told you. Or that the Lord has given you a bit of the picture, but you don't have <clears throat> it fully. I want you to know that that's on purpose. It is on purpose that God never gives you the full picture. And it's because the truth of the matter is that many people, it may not be you, but then there, it may be some people here. Many people, if God would give them the entire picture, the full picture, they back right out of it, or they, they would attempt to change the timing and the seasons of God. And there's also further reasoning why, and I'll get into that in a moment. There was something I wanted to say before I get into that. There was something I wanted to say before we got into prayer. And so I'll say it now. There are some people who will skip right. This is it's it's unrelated, but then it's still related. It's it's for somebody. There are some people who will skip right over the beginning of these messages. And it may not just be for this ministry, but for any ministry when there is prayer involved. But I do want you to know, for everyone who's here, who's under the sound of my voice, if you come to this message, you come to this ministry, not just this message, but you make it a point to be fed from what's being ministered here. And you sit under this ministry. You will be prayed over. You will be covered in prayer on a very consistent basis, not just through these messages, but also when you're no longer listening to these messages, you're covered, you're covered in prayer heavily. And so there will never be a point in time where you come to these messages and we don't open them by prayer and we don't close them by prayer. It's very important that you begin to understand and mature in the things of God and realize how important and powerful prayer is. Prayer changes things. Prayer is incredibly powerful. I'm thinking of something that I heard Dr. Cindy Trim say where she said prayer it's in my prayer journal. I don't have it on me now. But she said prayer has prophetic implications with no geographical limitations. I believe that's what she said. The point that I'm making is that for those of you who tune out during the prayer or you fast forward over the prayer, it's important for you to know there's a reason why we open up these messages in prayer. And it's because it's changing something within you. And not only is it changing something within you, it is moving things within the realm of the spirit. It's calling on God, moving things within the realm of the spirit to call back things that have been released from hell over your life. And so there are some things that the enemy has scheduled to enter into your life today, tomorrow, next week, because yes, he has a plan for your life, just like our Lord does. But when we come together in prayer and we agree together on the promises of God, on the things of God, it cancels out anything the devil thought that he could do in your life. Any foothold he may have had, prayer cancels things. It binds things and it looses things. It releases the blessings of God in your life. Prayer enforces things within your life. And so there may be a reason why the Lord called you to this message. And it could have been just so that you receive prayer. I'm just making a point that when you sit and you listen to the entirety of the message, there is so much that is unleashed to you within the realm of the spirit. And I, I, I wish you could see it. I wish you could see it. The entirety of it's for you. If God called you here and he ordered your steps to this message, the entirety of it is for you. I just had to say that because I believe that's for somebody. <clears throat> so this is your sign to keep going. This entire message. The, and stick to the end, the entirety of it. Because many people, they won't. They won't keep going. The Lord will show them something. The Lord will say that 
you know, the Lord will say, I know that you've been dealing with a lot with your child or with your children, but at some point they're going to come back to the Lord. At some point they're going to come back home, right? If they're a prodigal. But if the Lord showed you all that would have to take place before that happens, some people will try to jump the timing in the seasons of God, or some people may give up altogether, right? The same thing when it comes for your breakthrough. When If God told you to start a business, if God told you to stand for your new home, whatever it may be, if God showed you the entire picture, many people would actually back right out of it. I'm going to prove that to you. I want to take you to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12. see I'm gonna go there okay listen to this for our for our knowledge is fragmentary meaning it's in fragments we don't know everything incomplete and imperfect and our prophecy our teaching is fragmentary incomplete and imperfect but when the complete and perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and supersede. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with childish ways and I've put them aside. This means that you take God at his word. It means that I'm going to go on to verse 12 in a moment. This means you take God at his word. You've now matured in the things of God and you, you don't waver when you, at the sign of trouble, you don't back away. As I said, as many people will back right out of it. Many people will attempt to jump the timing in the seasons, seasons of God, either, or you stand and you do what it is God said, and then you wait to hear from God and know that there's a reason for everything. There's a purpose in everything. And I'm even going to go into the purpose of why God doesn't show us the entire picture, why he doesn't reveal it to us, why he doesn't tell it to us. Although there are people who are prophets in the land, although there, there are people even back in biblical history who the Lord sent to say what thus say of the Lord. But even then, even then, there's a reason why God doesn't reveal all of it. There's a reason why God doesn't tell us all of it. And we're going to get in, into that today and why you should keep going, why God looks for you to keep going. Verse 12, for now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality as in a riddle or enigma. Enigma means something that's a mystery, right? But then when perfection comes, we shall see and reality and face to face. Now I know in part and perfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even the same manner as I have been fully known and understood by God. It's a really deep thing when you begin to unpack th these specific scriptures. So what is Paul saying here? That we see in part and we know in part, and it will always be that way. It will always be that way until the return of Jesus, because God doesn't give us, he doesn't reveal to us the full picture and he doesn't tell it to us either because some people will mess it all up. They'll mess it all up. And so many of you may have heard this, but I will tell, I will tell this to you today and I encourage you to write it down that God tells us things and reveals things to us on a need to know basis. But why is that though? Why does he do that? And this is going to be your, this entire message, your sign to keep going. Why does God do this? It is to test the heart of a person because when you're in a process and you know, God reveals something to you and it's just a part of the picture, right? Or a piece of the puzzle. And then you go through this process of seeing the whole puzzle put together or, you know, okay, now I have to do that part. Now this is the next part of the puzzle. Or then God shows you this, then God shows you that. What is that called? It's a process. It's a process of completing the entire picture. We just read that in first Corinthians 13, 12, how at some point you will see fully, you will know fully it's a process, but God takes every person through that process 
to test the heart of a person. You know, many people will say, I've actually heard people say this, and some of you, this may be you if you are listening to this message. Some of you may say, well, why doesn't God just do it for me now? Why doesn't God just place me in the promised land now? Why doesn't God just just uh, make this business venture successful now? Why doesn't God just do this for me now? Where there's a process for it. There's a process for it, and it's because throughout that process, you're not, it's not because God can't do it today. That's never the case. It's because there's something happening within you and there's something happening within the earth during that time. And it's a testing. You know, when we look at 1 Samuel 16, 7, you know, it actually what's happening there is Samuel is told to go and anoint the next king for Israel. And he's looking among all of the brothers of, uh, in the son of uh, David and all the sons of Jesse and he goes to the first one where he's going down the line and he thinks in his mind, you know, surely this is the one. Surely there's a king among the men that are in front of me now because they're, they're very solid men, right? They're very strong. They look like they're men of war. They look the part. But then God tells him, he says, no, 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 don't even focus on that. Don't even focus on what they look like. Don't focus on what they have on because man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. But how does God judge the heart of a person? How does he look at someone's heart? We're going to get into that today because this is what happens during that process, during that time where God says, you, you cannot know the whole picture. He's not going to show it to you, but he's just going to reveal one part of it and then reveal the next. This is, the, this is called a process. And we're going to talk about what's happening, happening during that. He's testing the heart of a person and we're going to dig into how, but let's go. Let's actually go there. <clears throat> let's go to first Samuel 16, seven, because I want to read it from the mouth of, of what the Lord was saying word for word. First Samuel 16, seven. Let's actually go up to verse six. When they had come, he looked on Eliab, the eldest son, and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. So he looked upon him and he said, Surely this is God's anointed. Not knowing anything about the heart of this man, not knowing anything about his innermost thoughts, but just based on appearance, surely this is God's anointed. How many of you have done that? I have to just say that. How many of you have done that when it came to choosing who you sat under? who you receive from. And that's a, it's a dangerous thing when you do that, by the way, An incredibly dangerous thing. There are people who are sitting under ministries that God has rejected. God has rejected because they're going by the appearance of how things look. Maybe it's a large building. Maybe things look like it's all fancy and they put on a big show of smoke and mirrors and they have an incredible worship team. But it's important for you to know that God's not looking at all of that. He's not looking at how much money they put into their big fancy buildings. He's not looking at what kind of clothes they have on. He's not looking at how many people are sitting in the congregation. God's not looking at that. Even he tells him, if you go down to verse seven, but the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his appearance or at the height of his stature, for I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. So I can tell you, this is why I say, you know, when I open it up these messages through prayer, I say, Lord, I lower myself in humility. Let your words go forth. Let your opinions go forth, because it doesn't matter what Shannon thinks. It doesn't matter even what I look like. It doesn't matter. All that matters is that the power and the spirit of God and the anointing of God is here and it's flowing outward and you're receiving of the spirit of God. Doesn't matter what I look like. God looks at the heart. This is also why we shouldn't judge other people because God knows. God knows what's really in their heart. And that's what's happening. That is what's happening when you're going through this process where God is showing you bit by bit. He says, okay, you've done that, now do this. You've done that, now do this. It's unfolding bit bit by bit. I'm reminded that my husband has a thing where he moves his hand like this. (laughs) And it's really a saying of, 
or it's to um, imply that this is how things unfold with God. And I, I may not be doing it right, but like it's, it's to show the unfolding of the plan of God. And that's exactly how it happens. It unfolds bit by bit. The Lord never just opens it up to you fully, although it is yours fully, because 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, we know in part, we see in part, but then we shall know fully there will come a time. But for now, it's just unfolding. And what's happening through that process, God is looking at you. He's looking at you and he's searching your heart. And so you're not just in a process for the heck of it. Because some people will say, well, well, why does God need to search my heart? Why do I need to be in this process? Why, I, I want to do good. I want to do things according to God's standard of holiness and righteousness. I want to put God first. I want to put his kingdom first. But do you know that we can say that out of our mouth, but when there comes a situation that applies pressure to you, people react differently under pressure. People will say one thing, and then when stuff hits the fan, when things get real in their life, when there is a real battle, when you really have to stand for what it is God told you you could have, people react differently under pressure and that's the reality of the matter. This is why there's a process and through that process, God is looking at you to see what you do. Not only is he looking at you to see what you do, he's actually, he's listening to your innermost thoughts as well. And we're gonna get, get there. But it's not just a process just for the heck of it, it's because God wants to look at you. He wants to examine you. There's a purpose and a reason for everything that God does. And so you have been placed. <coughs> Get some, something to drink. You have been placed in a very specific process. And you're in it right now. That's different for everyone. You're in it right now and a very specific process for the cultivation of who God has called you to be and the revealing of the depths of your heart. You could write that down. You're in a process right now, every single person under the sound of my voice, and it's specific and it's detailed. And God, God has set things up along the timeline of your life for the purpose of this process. And it's for the cultivation of who he's called you to be and the revealing of the depths of your heart. You know, all that time when David was tending to the sheep, it seemed like it was just for the heck of it, right? But no, that was actually a process. There was something happening during that time and God was looking. God examines you. God is examining you now. And so he's revealing the depths of your heart. And that happens through pressure, right? What's really going on within your mind? How do you really reason? What will you do? when you're in a battle? How will you treat people? How will you treat God's people when they're not so nice to you, when they're not so kind to you? What is, the, what is your real character? Is your heart truly pure? Are you someone who will really put God in his kingdom first? Are you someone who will treat people badly and treat people horribly when they do something wrong to you? Are you someone who will abandon God's people when he connects them to you, when he says, these are the people I called you to pour into, into, and they do things you don't like, will you jump ship and abandon them? You know, this is something that the Lord examines within his people. I can tell you right off top, that's exactly how he chose Moses. There are some people, the Lord would have put them in the same position that he put Moses in and they would have jumped ship. Why? Because there was, it was, they were clearly a hard headed people. The Lord said, these are stiff necked people. Clearly they were hard headed. Clearly they continuously wanted to worship idols. Even Moses got frustrated with them, but he would go and pray to the Lord on the mountain and the Lord would refresh him and pour into him. And he received the glory of God, come back down and he'd have a fresh new mindset. He'd have revelation on what to do next, how to properly lead God's people. There are some people, they wouldn't seek God. They wouldn't prioritize time with God. They would jump ship. <clears throat> and so during that time, during the process, God is examining you. God is examining you now. What, what's really within your heart, what really goes on within your mind. And so as I was saying, 
God doesn't just listen to the words that you say because we could say, I really want to serve you, God. I really want to do this for your people. Here's the thing, and I have to get very specific with you. And I'm using this example because one of the things that many people pray for is financial abundance. Some people could say, God, make me a millionaire. God, make, give me six figures. If you do this for me, God, I will serve your people. I will give back to, to the local communities. I will do this for your people. God knows that right now, if he were to drop a million dollars in some of you all's lap, some people, some people's lap, if he were to drop six figures cash into some people's lap, although they just said that with their mouth yesterday or a few weeks ago, here they are off throwing it at just being very consumeristic, materialistic, and the Lord knows that. And through this process, there's a examining of you, <coughs> who you are, and what's really within your heart. He's, he, lis he listens to your thoughts as well. And so he does this when he's listening to your thoughts, and he's taking you through this process, and he's examining your heart. He's doing this to form a personal opinion about you. Do you know that? Do you know that God has a personal opinion about you because he's an actual person? That's what the Trinity is. It's, it's three personhoods in one. You know, there's the personhood of the Holy Spirit. There's a personhood of the Father. There's a personhood of the Lord. They're all God. But there's, it's three personhoods in one, and they all have different assignments. But what's happening when the Lord is examining you, he's forming a personal opinion about you. As in that person's righteous, this person's not. I'm going to get into that in a moment, but I want to prove that to you first. Let's go to Romans chapter 2, verse 16. <coughs> it says, <coughs> On that day, when, as my gospel proclaims, God, by Jesus Christ, will judge men and regard to the things which they conceal, their hidden thoughts. They're hidden thoughts. So you could say one thing, right? But God is actually, how do you know someone's hidden thoughts? Well, we can never know someone's hidden thoughts, but God does, right? Even the devil can't read your thoughts or listen to your thoughts, but God does. How, do you, how does he do that? Well, it takes time. You have to actually think those thoughts. You have to be presented with situations, opportunities, and then think certain things about what's in front of you, and then God waits and he listens and he examines your thoughts hidden thoughts and after this is done as these are being examined as well god forms an opinion about you and that's just how it is and someone could tell you otherwise but they're a liar because the word of god says we just read it in romans two sixteen, that jesus christ will judge men in regard to the things which they conceal their hidden thoughts He's, he's judging you to form an opinion about you. That's what that word judge means. You can look it up, textbook definition. The word judge means to form, or, to form an opinion or a conclusion about someone or something. And so as I just said, the Trinity, the Holy Trinity, are three personhoods in one. But the Lord, out of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Jesus Christ, uh, he forms a personal opinion about you. So God examines us all, even down to our innermost thoughts. And this happens over a period of time. And this is why there's a process of God only showing you things in part, only allowing you to know things in part. So he'll show you that and then wait and look and see how you react. And not just look and see how you react, but he'll listen to your thoughts. What are they thinking about that? He'll allow this situation to unfold and then watch. How are they reacting to this? What do they think about this? Are they acting one way, but then thinking a completely different way? Are they saying one thing, but then thinking a completely different thing? The Lord will examine your actions and your thoughts to determine what's really in your heart as things are unfolding. This is why it's given to us on a need to know basis. This is why. And so he's forming a conclusion, not just an opinion, but a conclusion, meaning a conclusion is something that is, this is who this person is. And that's just really what it means. You can look it up, textbook definition. 
He's forming a conclusion in his mind about you. This person is righteous. This person is not. This person truly honors the things of God. This person does not. And this is how it's determined how your life unfolds. This is how it's determined how your life unfolds. This is how we get the saying, decisions determine destiny. Because he looks at your actions. He looks at what you decide, what you're doing, how you're thinking about it in your mind. And then things begin to unfold accordingly. And it's just how it is. And so this is precisely what is happening when you're in what we call the process. I want to take you to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22, verse 1 through 2. This is going to be in the Amplified Classic Edition. <clears throat> Genesis 22, 1 through 2. Listen to this. After these events, God tested and proved Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. God said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I will tell you. There it is, the top of the verse, verse 1. After these events, God tested and proved Abraham. It was a test and it was to prove him. It was to search Abram's heart, or he was in Abraham at that point, search Abraham's heart and to prove him. And so during this time, you better believe, you better 100% believe that God was not just watching Abraham's actions, which if you keep reading the entirety of Genesis chapter 22, you can see that immediately after he heard the word of the Lord, he got busy. He got to work. He said the next day, he, he rose, if you go up, go down to verse three, next day, so Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and then began the trip to the place of which God has told him immediately. Didn't have the full picture, didn't even know which mountain God told him to go to. God said, go to this region and then I'll tell you which mountain to go to. Didn't even know which is following the instruction of the Lord. He didn't have the full picture. He didn't know that God was going to offer a ram in the bush. He didn't know that. But it was to test and to prove him. It tells us that. And so during this time, you better believe that the Lord was not just watching Abraham's actions, but he was listening to his thoughts. He was listening to his innermost thoughts, arguments that he may have been having within his mind. Should I do it? Should I, should I do it? Should I ask God why he gave me this promise only to take it away? How will God make good on his word if my only son is dead? He told me nations would come from me, but now he's telling me that I have to sacrifice my only son. These are the innermost thoughts that could have very well been going on within the mind of Abraham. And so the Lord wasn't just looking at his actions to see how quickly he moved, right? Did he sit on it? Did he wait on it? Did he hesitate to do it? But he was also listening to his thoughts, examining him to form an opinion about him, to come to a conclusion about what kind of man Abraham was. And then we know, based on the word of God, the Bible says that God called him the father of faith, the man of faith. And so after proving him and after testing him, God came to a conclusion in his mind. God formed an opinion in his mind about who Abraham was, and he called him a man of faith. And through that, then the Lord began to make good on what he said he was going to do. This was all in the foreknowledge of God, by the way. And I can't even begin to teach on that because it would take me off <clears throat> to a whole other message. But the Lord was examining him, listening to his thoughts, the arguments that he had within himself. And then he found that there was no ounce of doubt in him. That was proven by his actions. It was also proven by his innermost thoughts. When God calls somebody a person of faith, it's because he searched that person out. He tested that person. He's formed an opinion and came to a conclusion on that person. When we are told that David is a man after God's own heart, it's because God has searched out who this guy David is, right? He has proved him. He has tested him. And it has been found based on the opinion and the conclusion that the Lord has formed, formed about him in his mind, this is a man after my heart. 
loves the things of God, an incredible character. And so if you look at it, because we're still talking about Genesis 22, how God told Abram to go to this mountain, go to this region, and I'll tell you which mountain. <clears throat> Jesus just said what region, didn't say what mountain. And so it was on a need to know basis, a need to know basis. The same will be for you. This is why you must keep going. This is why you have to keep going no matter what you see, no matter what God told you, because some of you may be saying, well, I just heard God just told me to do this. God just told me to do that. God just told me that this, this house is mine. God just told me that marriage was for me. God just told me that my child would come home, that healing was for me to start this business, that you would be a millionaire, that you would wealth and riches would be in your home. Okay, well, take hold of it. Take hold of it and keep going. Keep going because he'll reveal more to you on a need to know basis. And there's a reason for that. He's examining you. He's examining what you're doing. How, how long does it take you to act? Are you hesitating? And then what's, go what's going on within your mind? What are the thoughts that you're having? And that determines how quickly and actually the order in which things unfold in your life. And so it's on a need to know basis. And it doesn't matter does not matter if all the pieces haven't come together right now or if you have no clue like zero clue on how god's going to bring it together how god's going to bring you to that place that he told you you would be at that place in your family that place physically that place in your business that place in your your body your temple all that matters is that you keep going you keep going you keep praying for your breakthrough you keep sowing seed you keep placing one foot in front of, the, front of the other. You keep believing God for your next step. And then you will see the goodness of God. I decree and declare that over you now. In the name of Jesus, you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I want to pray for you. I encourage you to come into agreement with me through prayer. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, that everyone's, everyone here under the sound of my voice will see the goodness of God. They will see all that it is you promised them. I thank you, Lord, that you're equipping them now with all that they need within to endure, to stand. That you are increasing them in faith by way of revealing the deep things of God to them, by opening up the scriptures to them. As your word says, that faith comes only by hearing the word of God and reading the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for your word, for relationship with you, for all that will be released to them as a, as a result of them continuing to place one foot in front of the other, as a result of them continuing to keep going in spite of what they see, in spite of what is going on out there in the world, in spite of what just happened today, in spite of what happens tomorrow. It doesn't matter. They're going to keep going. I thank you, Lord, for all that it is that you have unleashed for them within the realm of the spirit. Only a matter of time before it shows up in the natural. Only a matter of time before they see that which you have promised them. I thank you, God, for walking with us, for being here with us. I thank you, Lord, for examining us and being sure that everyone is a everyone will reap what they have sown lord good or bad that is the order that you have put in place god and i thank you for it many people don't thank you for that system but i thank you for it god that ensures that every wrong will be right there is nothing that is crooked within this earth that won't be made straight because it operates and flows by your divine system your divine order which is higher and superior than anything that could be going on here within the earth I thank you, Lord, for watching over your word to be sure that it is performed so that it never returns back void. And we give you glory. We give you thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. I'm going to tell you that if you keep going, you'll see the goodness of God. It's only a matter of time. Only a matter of time for some of you what you've been standing for will show up today. For some of you, what, what you've been standing for will show up this week. It's just, it's the beginning of the week still. For some of you, it will be by the end of this month. For some of you, it will be next month. Why? Because God is not a man that he should lie. The devil is a liar. And the Lord said he had been a liar from the beginning. Meaning that the, if there is something that has been planted within your mind, that is showing up within your life, 
and it's outside of alignment with the will and word of God concerning you, it is a lie. You have to see it as such. You have to treat it as such. You have to reject it and never stand for it being made manifest in your life. So I'll leave you with that. I want you to know that there is an option to send in prayer if you want a very specific prayer request. If you click on the link in the description and go to the contact page, it will give you the option to send in a prayer request. We are always praying for you. There's not prayer, one prayer request that goes unprayed for concerning the will of God for your life. There's also an option to send in testimonies. There's, there's many of you, and I thank God for what he's doing in your life. There are many of you who have been sharing within the comments. You know, there was a couple people who went back, or quite a few people, I believe, who went back to that message on the Lord releasing keys, and you shared how God has done it for you, how God has made good on his word, as he always will. He never will not make good on his word, and he's done it for you. He's provided you with a new place to stay, whether that was he has given you a new home, he's given you, meaning a new house, he has given you a new apartment, a new condo, whatever that is, you've been believing in God for it, but you've received your keys. God has not only done that, he has helped you furnish it in abundance because that is just how our God is. I love reading those kind of testimonies and I believe that the Lord is doing many things for you all and I encourage you to send them in because I love reading them and celebrating with you. Everyone who is here, the Lord is speaking to you, and you believe in God's principles of seed time and harvest, I encourage you to get a seed in the ground. That is how you're going to constantly receive a harvest when it comes to the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you, that's one of the ways that I was actually beginning to see things shift in my life in a major way when I, not, when I don't just... Yes, prayer, very important, but I'm talking about when it's a serious thing, when it's a big thing. And this is why I say this is when I begin to see change in my life in a massive way. When it's a serious thing, when it's a big thing, I put seed behind it. I pray, I put seed behind it. I will even put myself on a fast and then I see God move. So I pull out all the stops. And so I'll say this, this I'm gonna actually speak to a very specific group of people here. I say this for those of you who are in a place in your life where you need God to do something big for you. Yes, pray. Send in a prayer request. We want to pray with you. We want to stand with you. But don't just pray. Put a big seed behind it. Put a seed on it. Don't just do that. If it's really serious, especially when it, if it's something that pertains to bondage, put yourself on a fast. And I'm going to tell you, I say this by the Spirit of God, you're going to see something break in your life. You're going to, you're going to see breakthrough in your life and you're going to come forth with the testimony. And I give God thanks right now. I give him thanks right now because we're decreeing and declaring that it's already done. And so I love you all. Know that I'm always praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message. Mm -hmm.